Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about 2019 trends and in particular my personal favourite trends and the ones which I believe are going to be the most wearable this year, the ones that I think you should be investing in for your wardrobe. So at this time of year, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of feeling the January blues. I need something to look forward to, something to get me inspired and excited about the year ahead. So I've done lots of research looking back at past catwalk shows and hoping Hopefully you will find this list of trends really useful when it comes to choosing the items for your wardrobe this year. So before I get started on the trends, just a little kind of noticement for my channel, I am going to be continuing to upload three videos a week throughout 2019 and my upload days are going to be Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays, so make sure you are subscribed if you don't want to miss any of those videos because there are going to be a lot of videos coming your way this year, I hope you're very excited for that and if you have got any video ideas, any suggestions, then please let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what you'd like to see here on my channel. If you are new for today's video, then hello and welcome. I'm Josie and here on my channel I post loads of things ranging from haul videos to trend videos like this, styling videos, how to wear a chunky knit jumper five ways, things like that. So I hope you will subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. So yeah, that's the new upload schedule. Wish me luck. And without further ado, let's get started on 2019 trends. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to talk about some colors that we're going to be seeing a lot of in 2019. Towards the end of last year, Pantone released their trend predictions for the year ahead and Pantone predicted that this really vivid coral colour which they're calling living coral is going to be the colour of 2019 and that will infiltrate everything ranging from makeup, we're probably going to see like bright coral lips all the way through to homeware so maybe bright coral sofas and things like that but where we are most interested in is the fashion. So personally if you watched my trends that I'm happy to dump in 2019 video, my thank you next week Video, which by the way I filmed in early December and then when I published it on New Year's Eve there seemed to be so many videos on trends that people wanted to die in 2019. I don't know if everyone just had the same idea or what, but I'd never seen a video like that before, but oh my goodness, there are so many, and I'm so glad that so many of you loved that video. If you haven't seen it, I will leave it linked up on the screen and down below. But in that video, one of the trends that I didn't want to take into 2019 was neon. And obviously, Living Coral is a really bright coral colour, it is almost neon, so personally I don't see myself dressing head to toe in it, I probably won't even buy any garments in this coral shade but where I might invest is accessories. I do actually already have a beautiful accessory in my collection which does have some coral in it and it is this beautiful Valentino rock stud bag. I bought this maybe three years ago as one of my very first really expensive handbag purchases and I still absolutely love it but I just didn't really feel this colour last year so I'm so excited to get a lot more use out of it this coming summer. So my top tip when it comes to this living coral shade is just just play around with accessories, don't spend too much money if you're unsure on the shade and how it will work with your wardrobe. Start with maybe a very affordable high street handbag, perhaps a beach bag, I think it's a really great colour to wear when you're on holiday, and just see how it works with the rest of your wardrobe before investing any further. On the catwalks we were seeing much more muted shades, I like to call them almost like a sunshine orange, so it's a little bit more dusky than the living coral. Versace did this particularly well, I loved how they did this in a beautiful satin material which really brought out the colours, in fact I do have this skirt, obviously it's not Versace, this is Topshop, but it does have that beautiful sunburn orange shade in there. This is a satin skirt and I don't think we're going to see the satin skirt trend going away anywhere anytime soon. And this I think was like £30 or thereabouts, so very affordable. Everything that I mention clothing wise in this video as well as what I'm wearing etc will be linked in the description box, so just click show more to shop any of the pieces shown or mentioned in today's video. But sunburn orange I think is a much more wearable way and perhaps paired with even more sunsetty colours like in the Versace example, there's a really beautiful almost burnt red shade in there too and I think that is a much more wearable take on the coral colour trend. So if you know me and my taste in fashion well, you will know that I am yet to grow out of pink. I still absolutely love it and I think I'm forever just going to be a pink lover. And in 2017 and 2018 it was all about millennial pink and I fully invested in the millennial pink 
trend because I'd loved it all my life so it wasn't really a new trend to me I already had so much of it in my wardrobe millennial pink I would describe as kind of the color of my love tub seat here but the trend to look out for on the pink spectrum in 2019 is more of a dusty rose pink I think the official terminology they're calling it is pressed rose and I have a really good example here in this beautiful satin slip dress which again is from Topshop so again really affordable it's like a dirty pink it's a lot more grown up a lot more wearable and this I think in satin especially it looks absolutely beautiful but a very very wearable and not too overly feminine pink shade so this dusty pressed rose shade is going to be the pink tone for 2019 and I'm fully ready to invest in it head to toe accessories outerwear knitwear I will be investing in this trend thoroughly another couple of pieces which I've already invested in in this shade for my wardrobe include this beautiful merino wool turtleneck this is from Stella McCartney so it was an investment piece but when it comes to basic and classic pieces like this I'm more than happy to spend a little bit more money just so that I get that beautiful quality and something like this of course is so me and such a building block for my wardrobe that it's going to last year after year now that this is officially a hugely on-trend color for this season I'm going to be getting so much wear out of it and yeah that's just an absolute classic piece in that pressed rose shade and then when it comes to accessories I have my beautiful mulberry I believe this is called the Seaton handbag and again just such a wearable shade it is pink but it's almost like a neutral pink because it's almost brownie this dusky rosy brownie pink shade in fact I think the official name that mulberry give this is rose water which I think sounds so so lovely this handbag great size fits all my essentials in there and it looks great worn across body so another piece I already have in my wardrobe for this pressed rose color trend again as I mentioned with coral if you're not too sure on how this color is going to work with your wardrobe start with a high street and then if like me you find that it just absolutely works with your wardrobe works with your skin tone and you find yourself reaching for it time and time again that is the time to maybe make a few more investment purchases but don't go spending all of your money when you haven't tried it out in a more affordable way to start with that would be my top tip and then before we move on to other kinds of trends, just a couple more colours to mention. Earthy tones are going to be really big, especially while we're still in this winter period and even moving into spring. One in particular which is going to be really big is Terranium Moss. Now on the top of my head I don't think I have anything in this kind of mossy, earthy green shade in my wardrobe, aside from actually a coat from Reese which I had last year, which is up in the loft, I definitely need to get that down, but it's a very neutral, earthy, kind of natural colour. And then also toffee brown now this is a really warm almost sweet brown color it's making a comeback across loads of different textures whether that's silks or satins or even really textured materials like wool going all the way across to patent leather we're going to be seeing a lot of this really rich toffee color we saw it head to toe on the catwalks from designers such as Burberry and Dior so it won't be long until it's filtering down into the high street in my wardrobe I do already have an example of a patent toffee brown item and it is this pair of boots from Topshop these are pointed toe really good heel heights so I've been getting a lot of wear out of these hopefully they're still available if they are I will leave them linked down below but again a really great classic piece that works well with so many different outfits and now we move on to a different trend entirely still kind of color related more of a pattern and it is tie-dye so this is a trend that I'm not sure about. Maybe come spring summer you'll see me dressed head to toe in tie-dye but at the moment I'm just I don't know, I, I'm just not sure how it can be made to look chic. For me, it just brings back memories of the 60s and 70s, which yes, I do really like, but more kind of school craft projects and doing it yourself in the washing machine with dyes and just, yeah, festivals, that kind of thing. Not really what I was expecting to see on the catwalks, that is for sure. However, the catwalks at New York Fashion Week were absolutely full of it. Designers from Philip Lim were doing it, Altazara, and then Dior did a really cool kind of kaleidoscope tie-dye pattern layered over florals which was slightly more wearable but I'm still not totally sold on it we are already seeing it infiltrate the high street on retailers like Zara and Urban Outfitters but personally I think it's not one that I'll be investing in this year another crafty trend that I'm not too sure about is crochet we saw JW Anderson and Oscar de la Renta showing crochet on their catwalks this year and again it just 
brings school craft projects to mind so that's another trend that I probably will pass on in 2019. So on to something a little bit more wearable, a trend which again I've already started to see on the high street is the fine print trend, almost like a scarf print and I do remember mentioning this I think in my very first trend video so that probably would have been in 2017 but to give you an example I got this high neck top from River Island and this I think is a really beautiful and again affordable way of experimenting with this fine print trend for your wardrobe before investing a huge amount of money in it. This is a trend that because it is quite bold I probably will only buy from the high street I probably won't invest in any more premium pieces of this pattern because it is a little bit more out there and not as timeless as some of the more neutral trends that I've mentioned in this video but we saw designers like Louis Vuitton really having a lot of fun with this very dramatic very luxurious kind of print personally I think a really easy way to inject this kind of pattern into your wardrobe and be very on trend is with a scarf if you saw my video which was how to make your old clothes look new again again I'll leave that one linked up on the screen and down below I would would recommend getting a scarf perhaps maybe a silk scarf with a fine print and wrapping it around the handle of one of your handbags and then that way you're instantly updating one of your favorite accessories with one of 2019's biggest trends so my next set of trends are design details which are very feminine girly and romantic so I am overjoyed to be mentioning these trends as ones to look out for in 2019 the first of which is ruching now ruching is going to be a really big design detail on dresses in particular personally I really love them for adding curves and volume to a very slim silhouette. They can also be very, very flattering. Diane von Furstenberg, of course, has the famous dresses with the ruching around the tummy area. Great for when you are overindulging around the Christmas period or if you're just a little bit conscious of your tummy area. They're just super, super flattering. So we're going to be seeing a lot more of that across the board this year. When it comes to the way that the designers did ruching on the catwalk, I loved how Givenchy did it. They paired ruching with really slim pleats and I love that contrast to create a really Really beautiful silhouette and we also saw designers like Calvin Klein and Valentino also showing ruching and I think this is a trend that will work particularly well on the high street as well. The next super feminine trend detail we're going to be seeing in 2019 is bows and that's another one that I'm really excited for. Brands like Ted Baker and Kate Spade already do bows so well. One of my favourites is this beautiful little handbag that I got from Kate Spade almost in that pressed rose colour as well ticking two trends with one box and it has this little bow detail at the top here. I I think we'll be seeing bows on our shoes, bows in our hair, really sleek chic ponytails. I think it was Stella McCartney did this. A chic pulled back ponytail with a bow detail is going to be a real go-to look. Do it yourself at home with a ribbon. It really won't cost you much at all to get a really nice, maybe a velvet half a meter of ribbon from a sewing shop and adding that to your ponytail. Super affordable way of doing the trend. And we'll also see it on clothing too. I have this jumper from a couple of years ago from Club Monaco with these beautiful bows down the back. This is most definitely going to be on trend again this coming season but I'd also love to see bows at the back of coats on sleeve details things like that so yeah that's definitely a trend that I'll be investing in heavily in 2019. Sorry if the camera's moved I just had to change my battery quickly but going back to bows we're also going to be seeing it a lot on necklines oops and this is one of my current high street favorites this blouse again from Topshop which I featured in my Christmas in London lookbook video if you saw that one. This blouse in this neutral shade with this lovely very feminine in bow detail at the top here I think has very much got some Chloe vibes about it wear this with a fringe jacket and a saddle bag and you're definitely going to be rocking those western Chloe girl vibes but a very affordable way of wearing the bow trend it also works really well with another of 2019's very feminine trends which is ruffles this is a beautiful silk blouse from LK Bennett a little bit more premium when it comes to the price tag but again if you know a colour really works for you and you love your luxurious materials like silk then this is a beautiful option. It's also got some ruffles on the sleeves here but it's this lovely bow on the collar which makes it so on trend for 2019. So I mentioned it briefly a second ago but the fringing trend is not going anywhere in 2019. We still seem to be riding this kind of western cowboy trend. Cowboy boots are not going anywhere. We are still loving those Fendi kind of boots. In fact I have a couple of new pairs to show you. Maybe I should have just gone ahead and invested in the Fendi ones because I clearly love the cowboy boot trend. Trend. I have got a couple of new pairs from Topshop in white and this really light kind of camel colour. I have worn my snakeskin ones from Topshop so much so I definitely wanted to invest in a couple of more neutral patterns to go with white jeans or with my midi dresses, my midi skirts, things like that. So western trend cowboy boots not going anywhere. But fringing is something we saw on the catwalk so much 
brands ranging from Coach to Tom Ford were doing it in delicate ways such as on handbags all the way up to full-on fringed skirts and that is definitely something that I would love to invest in for the spring summer season. Fringing is something which is on trend earlier, I think it was around March last year I got this, this fringe jacket in this beautiful suede material. I'm so glad I kept hold of this because it is back in fashion and I definitely foresee this trend lasting all the way through to winter. I was thinking about next new year because we're going to be going back into the 20s when we are going from 2019 to 2020. I think there's going to be a lot of 20s themed parties. We're going to be getting our inspiration from the 20s a century ago so lots of Gatsby flapper style fringing so I definitely think this is going to be a trend which will last into occasion wear and winter fashion as well as we start to get into that 20s spirit. One final trend to mention is a hair accessory trend. We've already seen it towards the end of 2018 starting to take over Instagram and in shops as well. Luckily you can get it very affordably and it is hair slides and headbands. I personally love this trend. I don't like having my hair down like this. It really annoys me how it always gets in my face. So I love having hair slides in. Don't know why I didn't put any in today. But also really big chunky headbands. I always think of a fellow blogger, Instagrammer, Leonie from Okachore. She's been rocking this really fabulous kind of rust coloured, looks almost like a velvet headband lately. I'm currently looking for something along those lines which is going to suit me. So if you've got any recommendations then let me know. Anything that keeps the hair out of the face throughout the winter, in the summer obviously sunglasses, but anything that keeps my hair out of my face in winter is a real tick from me and the high street has some really great options as well. I've seen so many people in there, what I got for Christmas videos, talking about the Gucci hair slides. I just, I just cannot spend £300 on a hair slide but there is a really good dupe for the Dior one and also the tortoiseshell ones on ASOS. I'll leave a picture on the screen here. It says J'adore instead of J'adior and it's under £10. So again, I'll leave that link down below because it's a really good dupe. But headbands and hair accessories are going to be big this year and that is another trend that I'm very happy to add to my wardrobe. So that is my roundup of 2019 most wearable trends, the trends that I'm most looking forward to. I really hope you found this video interesting and and useful let me know in the comments below which trends you're looking forward to buying are you going to be investing in any of these do you already have them in your wardrobe from previous seasons that is the ultimate result or are there any trends you're going to be downright avoiding for me personally crochet and tie-dye I think will be on that list but just let me know in the comments below I'd love to know how you will be taking these trends into the new year if you enjoyed this video and found it useful then please just spend a couple of seconds giving it a thumbs up it really helps me to know what kind of videos you guys like and create more along these lines so it's really really helpful and that is all from me so thank you so much for watching i will see you very soon in my next video bye